Now, church, there are three things. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, let's go over there and look at it. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, now watch that. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, dost thou not, dost not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul doth not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? I want to justify with this text what I've said this morning. God Almighty said to this preacher, if you don't, if you don't show courage and exercise leadership, in this hour of trial and dissension and, and evil in behalf of these children over here, then I'm not worthy to stand in the pulpit and I'm going to have to answer to God Almighty for it. Said, if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, with kids committing suicide and dope. One of my ladies told me last night at the banquet here uh, 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 for some of the people of Landmark, she works at a certain institution uh, here in the city. She said so many of and called the number that we have are young people. And she said, Pastor Rawlings, these young people, their minds, their brain is fried. You know what's happened? Dope is killing our young people. And yet we have Mayor Don Apkin and Addison Clipson and Phil Snyder and Brian Humphreys and those two on the planning commission that would close these children out under false pretext that that building is unsafe. And I'm not going to be chargeable before God. Amen. God said he's going to hold me accountable. That's serious business, isn't it? Amen. Now, not only that, but I've got a word for those fellows. In verse 15 of this same chapter, lay not wait. Look at it now, men and women. Lay not wait, O wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place. Amen. These men have spoiled our resting place. Amen. And children, look up here a minute. God bless you for your behavior Amen. and for your listening. Amen. There was a boy in our service not long ago and I did something and he said to his mama, he said, mama, I want to go to church there. That man, that's what, that's what I want the minister to be. And so my beloved friend, after a lifetime of crusading for this blessed gospel, I want my children to say, I want to be like my preacher, Amen. to face issues and to face them courageously. If you, if you want to look at something, look at verse 10 of this same 24th chapter. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Ooh, that's good. Now I realize there's some people and young people, you'll come through life and there'll be days when it'll be hard on you since I last met with you on Sunday, a Christian businessman contributed several hundred dollars for our high school football uh, team uh, to buy new equipment because their equipment was locked in this building. And then some others gave lesser amounts and our kids played the number five team in the state of Ohio in their, their division. I knew our boys in all likelihood Hood could not take that game, but I spoke to them the other afternoon a uh, day or two before the game, and I said to those young men, look at me, fellas. All I ask of you when you go out on that football field, that gridiron, is to be a man. Yeah. Yeah. To know where the ball is and go to the ball. Yeah. And I want to say to all you people here today in the vicissitudes of life and in the trials of life, know where the ball is and not be afraid. I had a professional man, the lawyer, to say to me, uh, just this past week, you'd be surprised the number of calls that we have had from people 
uh, in the perfection, in the law of perfection. And not only that, but we've had calls about this Addison Clipson and said, if you need us to testify, just call us in the construction business and in the profession. That's how the, that's how the city feels. Now, wait a minute. If you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. I'm not fighting this battle for myself. But I do hope and pray, God, that in America today, somebody's got the courage to stand forthrightly for the things that's right. And it's right for that building to be open. Now, we'll cooperate. We have tried to. But my days of cooperation is wearing thin. We're now paying another architect that Addison Clipson had recommended, and we thought, well, surely they know we're trying, and money wasn't the question. It's going to cost us several thousand dollars to have the plans from beginning to end drawn again. But that evil and wicked man went ahead and ordered that building closed under the direction of Mayor Don Atkin. Now, there's some things, ladies and gentlemen, that wear thin. And let me say this, you know, as a preacher, I cannot address evil and talk about sin and talk about violation of rights of my fellow man and all of these things without bringing that man that lived for 33 and a half years in and around Galilee. He said, marvel not that the world hates you. It hated me before you. And my blessed Savior was led like a lamb to the slaughter and like a sheep before a shearer is dumb. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For the transgression of my people was he stricken. All we like sheep have gone astray. I want to tell you today, out of my heart, I do not have one single thing to boast or brag about. I look back upon my life and I see all of my failures and things I should have done that I let go and things that God had told me to do really through his word and I failed to do it because of negligence and one thing or another. I'm not going to stand before you and my public and tell you that, that I'm perfect. God knows when I stand before him and after I answer over 30,000 messages that I preach, I'm not gung-ho about having to answer for all of it. But I want to tell you something, men and women, a right is right and wrong is wrong. Amen. And the unholy and the holy has no part together. And I've, I've spent my lifetime trying to save people, trying to save people. God knows Until a man is born from above, he's lost. Jew or Gentile, bond or free. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I know that men and these men, listen, any man... He may go outside and do things, but I want to say this. When it's all said and done, he's got a conscience to live with. And anybody that hurt one of these little ones and these children, God bless you, Landmark, for continuing to reach them and you workers in the classrooms and you drivers and certainly our attendance is down and there's a, uh, there's a deadness And I understand that it's hard to kick against the prick, so to speak. But we're not going to give up. And the doors one day will be opened and God will be glorified. Why? Because his son died to liberate people. And you know, uh, before I leave the air, let me say this. I learned a long time ago not to have bitterness in my heart toward any man. You may say, well, Reverend Rawlings, you've been cutting and hard. When a man has a cancer 
And I had triple surgery not long ago, and I told my doctor he didn't want to perform all three at one time. I said, Doc, I'm hiring you. Go ahead and get all of it out so I don't have to come back. And he was my friend to operate and take care of it. Now listen, sometimes a festering thing needs to be operated on and get it out. And I'm talking to people today that even in your home, there's such a, there's such a cancerous thing as bitterness. Don't you go out of this building or listen to me on television and say, well, Reverend Rawlings bitter. No, I deal with realities. And I deal from the standpoint of strength and not weakness. And I want to close with this story. The little eyeless girl over in Kentucky that was brutally murdered several months ago. Now look up here, people, just a minute. One of our beloved bus captains and one of our beloved drivers picked that little girl up and brought her on one of Landmark's buses and she attended this Sunday school and that little thing heard that Jesus loved her. And just a few days, I guess the Sunday before, the Sunday before, she was murdered. Some teacher in one of these Sunday school classes told the little girl that Jesus loved her. And today she's in eternity. That's what makes it worth it all. And I'm glad that someday when life's trials and burdens are over, that we can walk into the presence of the great God of this universe and be able to say, Lord, we did our best. And that little girl will be in heaven as a witness and testimony that somebody cared even though her precious little life was snuffed out prematurely. That's what I'm talking about. And youngsters today and adults and you people, professional people who are here and you wanted to hear what the Reverend says, I want to say this. When it's a battle for souls, it's a battle unto the death. And that's why my Jesus nailed to that cross and had been there for hours. I've seen that place and what a place it is. It's called Golgotha in the scriptures, the place of a skull. And he hung on that cross in that, in that burning hot sun. And it isn't anything uncommon for, the, for it to be 110 degrees in the shade in that country. And all day he hung there as God's lamb dying for sinners. And a while before he died, he looked out over that hissing mob and he prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And may I temper what I've said that these wicked men who have closed that building, oh God, help them to understand they know not what they've done. And to repent and to ask a merciful God to have mercy upon them and forgive them before it's too late. Thank God he forgives. There's never any sin so terrible but what God forgives. Locking a church door is not an unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin is when a man turns his back on the mercy and grace of God and accounts the wooing of the Holy Spirit to the works of the devil. And I tell you today, it's good news to be able to say to people of all walks of life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. And church, you and I better never let bitterness come in. We can be strong in the Lord, but not bitter. And mother and daddy with divorces like they are today, you think maybe bitterness is one of the terrible things that's destroying people. I think that's what's wrong with these men. They're bitter. But if you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. I'm glad Jesus didn't faint on the cross, but he tasted death for every man. Let's stand with our heads bowed for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for these boys and girls that have never been to the cross, for these parents, for these young couples 
And may this be the good hour when man will say, God loves me, I know. And our Father, I pray for men to repent of their evil and and uh, that broken home or like those that talked to us this past week that's struggling with the burden of sin. May they come to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, here's my burden. Save me. And Father in heaven, may a spirit of revival break out in this great church because of the pressure and of the, uh, the things that we're trying to do to reach this city through television and radio and the bus ministry and literature and Sunday school and evangelism and mission conferences. God bless those who have heard this message today. Keep your heads bowed a moment. Choir is going to sing an invitation hymn in just a minute or two. Would you come today, young people? Would you speak to your friend that you brought today and say, I'll go with you to altar? Young couple, dad and mother, it's time now to get on one side of the other. You want to be on the Lord's side? You want to be on that side that Jesus Christ says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. That means he'll save you if you'll come. Come now. Come today. Thank you, Lord, for your power to save. In Jesus' name, amen.